Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so amazing. Amen. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. I have a praise report to share with you. Jantal and I just returned from Tanzania, East Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. God opened up doors for, for me to go and minister to the people there across the world. And he opened up doors that only he can. We received an invitation just early November from a, a, a Japanese missionary who lives in Tanzania and pastors with her husband, pastors a church of the Indian population, Hindi speaking. So either they were straight from India or their parents or grandparents, et cetera, came from there. Um, and so I got to minister one service to a Hindi service where there was Hindi translation. And I got to minister uh, one service with Swahili translation, which was open to all the people of Tanzania. And we saw God move in such tremendous power there at both of those services. Hallelujah. Just like we see him here move in power, great power, and deliver many. He did the same thing over there. And it was so beautiful to just see our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world of different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different languages get to receive God's power and love as well. And just be together with all, with Japanese and Indian and Tanzanian, all together in one place. It was amazing. It was the glory of God. And I'm so excited for this revival that's spreading across the whole world. This is the beginning. Yes, we praise God. Hallelujah. We praise God. We praise God that he is opening up doors. I'm, we're going to be going to Dubai next month as well, ministering there and more countries so this is truly amazing we praise jesus we give him the glory for opening up opening up doors so the whole world may encounter his power his love and be set free and healed amen hallelujah well i'm so expectant for what jesus is going to do today and this message that i have to share with you that god's god's having me share with you today i know will be life-changing today it's time for your eyes to open up in the spiritual realm for you to no longer be blind my people perish because of lack of knowledge my people perish because of lack of knowledge of how things work in the spiritual realm my people perish because of lack of eyesight into the spiritual realm they perish because the enemy can see in the spiritual realm clear as day they perish because the enemy has been around a while and is very knowledgeable in how it, the things work in the spiritual realm. So to have a blind person versus, a, versus, uh, versus the enemy against them can see. We know how that's going to end. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. So none of you are going to perish because your eyes will open up today. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil can no longer outsmart you, outwit you. You'll have the victory through all the days of your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to teach on the spiritual realm today. The spiritual realm. There is a realm. There is an unseen realm. The world, the people who don't believe in God, or even religious Christians that aren't open to the power of God, they don't know that there's a spiritual realm at all. What you see is what you get. Is, I mean, they don't know anything about a spiritual realm happening, this realm that's unseen. And so if we're not careful, we become too much in the world's way. And, you know, it becomes just the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, that what we see is what there is, and there's no such thing as the unseen spiritual realm. So we have to renew our minds. We have to humble ourselves. We have to open our hearts up to God for him to teach us the things that so few know, the things that the world does not see, the complexities of the spiritual realm. Amen? So in this world, okay, L.A., let's take the city of L.A., for example. You have certain rules in this, in this land, in this city. There's uh, are, are traffic rules that you have to learn what these traffic rules are or there are consequences for you breaking those rules. 
we learn that there's a certain speed limit we have to travel at. And if we know, we know it's a law. There's a law that if we exceed the speed limit, a cop catches us, they will pull us over, they'll give us a ticket, we have to pay the fine. We know that there are certain laws. You can't just like break into somebody's house and steal things. If you do, there's consequences. You will go to jail. There are so many different laws in America and even specifically here in LA. Um, there's, there's certain things like uh, uh, credit that when it comes to credit, I remember I was never taught about credit. I was never taught about it in high school or college. And so, it, it, man, it was a struggle at first to learn, like, what do you mean? I can't have this apartment because my credit isn't, like, so amazing? What is this? You know? I had to learn about that, learn about credit cards and how there's a credit score. And, okay, you have to pay the minimum payment due or else your credit's going to be bad. You know, there's these, like, laws in life here, right? And you have to, you have to learn them. And in the cases of like credit, for example, you kind of have to seek it out to learn them or else you're breaking the laws and you're reaping the consequences. You don't get the apartment. You don't get the car. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so we understand this in the physical realm, how there's rules, how there's laws, and it's no big deal. We just follow them. We know, you know, this is for our good. These laws make sense. These laws are for our safety, for example, for driving wise. The credit laws can kind of make sense, okay, we can, we can understand. So we accept them and we simply follow them and it's no big deal. It's no, it's no struggle to go slow, to go a certain speed limit on the road. You know, it's no, sh it, okay, I'll make sure I pay this exact amount every month, okay. We learn them, we move forward and we prosper in life. We don't have to pay fines, we don't end up in jail. We get to have apartments and houses and cars, for example, right, amen? Okay, so what I just explained to you, how there are laws, there are laws, there are principles, there are laws in the physical world here in LA. In the spiritual realm, there are laws. There are laws as well. And many people do not know about these laws. If someone came to LA and didn't know these rules, even even you come from my from a small town. Small towns, people won't even lock their houses and cars and stuff, you know? But you come to LA and do that, and you reap really bad consequences you wouldn't in your small town, right? So in the spiritual realm, there are many people, there are many Christians who don't know the laws in the spiritual realm. And therefore, because there are true laws, they break them, and they unfortunately reap the consequences. So many people think it's just God, and that's it. There's no spiritual realm. God, give me this. God, do this for me. When God's saying, there is a spiritual realm I've created. There are laws in this spiritual realm. I will answer your prayer. I will provide for you. I will deliver you. I will heal you. But you have to abide with the laws of the spiritual realm in order to receive what I want to give you. And we need to understand this is not a bad thing. This is not an annoying thing. This is a good thing. We are good citizens to obey the laws here, to not drive carelessly, but to obey the speed limit. That's a, it's like a good thing to have laws, amen? And so God has created this universe. God has created the spiritual realm with intention, with care, with, he knows what he's doing. He knew what he did when he created this world. We're just the creation. What do we know? We need to be humble. A child doesn't understand why there's laws, right? A child cannot understand. Even a young person, they just want to speed down the road. They don't get it. Why we have speed limits, the importance of it. So many Christians, they don't get it. They're just like, God, let me pray how I want. Let me do things how I want. Why does there have to be rules? Why does there have to be principles? Why do I have to follow them? Why can't things just happen how I want? God is God. I am that I am, he says. He has laws in the spiritual realm. And if we want true abundant life, guess what? 
we need to follow the laws. If we want abundant life, I stand here passionately because God has released abundant life to me in every area of my life. But it's not simply because God loves me. It's not simply because I love God. But God has revealed the spiritual realm to me. He's opened my eyes. He showed me the laws. And I've taken the laws seriously. I've taken the things of God in the spiritual realm with reverence, with care. Because I want to please God, number one. If I go against his, against his uh, laws, go against his ways, it's not a good testimony of a Christian on this earth. Number two, I'm not able to reap the abundant life God has for me. So I come with that heart of I want to stay in God's laws, in the spiritual realm, how it operates. I want to make sure I don't step out of these laws so that I'm reaping the bad consequences. Amen? I speak a lot about um, when you go against the word of God, when you sin, uh, you are, it's the action of opening up the door to the devil. So now I'm going more in depth for you to understand that. That it's not just that you're opening up the door to the devil. It's that you are breaking a law in the spiritual realm. And because you break in, broke the law, now the door is open for the devil. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. Humble yourself and allow God to open your eyes in the spiritual realm. A man reaps what he sows. A man reap what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. What do you mean? What do you? I thought that God is so loving. What if you really love God? He really loves you, but you sow bad things. Doesn't God just take it away? The grace of God. That's not how the grace of God works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Really, a lot of people think this way. What Do we see the scripture here? What I'm teaching today to you, by the way, it's all in the word of God. But the thing is, is people are lacking revelation, true revelation of what the word of God is saying. Big reason why? Because we need anointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the people who can see in the spiritual realm and say, this is what the scripture means. Oh, and by the way, this scripture does not mean that. You heard that from a religious preaching of Jesus. Paul says there's a different Jesus you're hearing, you're, you're, you've been, been listening to, not the Jesus I preached you. There's been a lot of not right Jesus preaching for a while because there's not been a lot of Apostle Pauls or prophets or other apostles in these days. Amen? So it's time for you to be equipped. So many people, they read the scripture, they read this, a man reaps what he sows, and they just move along. You know, I was a Christian my whole life. I was in church my whole life. But I never had real revelation of what this means. You reap what you sow. So this is a law. This is an example of a law. It doesn't matter how much you love God. It doesn't matter how much God loves you. It's a law in the spiritual realm. And it breaks God's heart because he doesn't want to see you reap destruction. But he has his laws there. It's just how it was created, this universe, this world. That's why he has his precious word for us to, to carefully take in the word of life, to guide us like a lamp upon our feet. Where do I go to make sure that I'm sowing everything properly, the good? Where do I go to make sure I'm always in God's will? Let me look at the word. Let me hear the word of God, the anointed word of God preached so I can be equipped, so my eyes can be enlightened. So this is an example of a law that I'm talking about. It doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you fast, how much you love God. It does not matter how much. But if you are sowing disrespect to people, you're going to reap disrespect in your life. 
if you sow words of death over yourself or, or, or over other people, you how the spiritual realm works is the spiritual realm moves. Like, there's, an, there's a reaction to that, a reaction to your action. You know, New Age, they steal the things of God. They're twisting the laws of attraction, manifestation, all these things. This is, this is the devil knows the spiritual realm. And he's manipulating the spiritual realm. People are manipulating the spiritual realm that God created for God's people to be blessed. And he's manipulating it. People are manipulating the spiritual realm following the principles of God. That's called witchcraft. Because they are reaping what they want, except for it doesn't come with the blessing of God. And what happens is when you manifest, when you, when you go with the new age th- thing and you, you, you do the things the new age way, which are actually the spiritual realm principles, but, but without God, that's the action of opening up doors to the devil. So new age, they see results. They think, I mean, they're seeing results because it's the spiritual realm. It's the same spiritual realm. It's the principles. But the difference is, is that, okay, you might see something happen for you. People can speak. You know, they want somebody to like them or something. You know, I, I want this to come to me. And they do the spiritual thing. They speak it over because there's power of life and death in your tongue. So they speak it. They speak it. There's power in that. There's power in prophesying. In the spiritual realm, things will happen. Things will happen. But the thing is, is it's not when it comes to them, it's not the blessing of God coming to them. It says in the Bible, the blessings of God come without sorrow. So instead, instead of the blessings of God coming with them, they've, they've opened the door to the devil. They've opened the door to the devil for demons to come in. This is how people are deceived. So what, what's what the state of today is that so many Christians don't know about the spiritual realm, and the non-believers do. The New Age people do. So many people, I mean, demons are in the spiritual realm. So many Christians, so many preachers don't even acknowledge that demons exist. So that gives you insight that they know nothing about the spiritual realm. They can't help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 9, 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. God wants to bless you so much. God wants you to have abundance in every area. There is a law, though. You have to sow bountifully, abundantly. You have to sow abundantly to get those things. You have to give to God. You have to give offerings, seeds to God. This is a law in the spiritual realm. And the people who can see in the spiritual realm are not afraid to sow. They are given all of their money to God <laughs> because they understand it's a law. When you sow to God, that's what makes, yes, now I can open up the doors and pu- put all of the blessings in your lap. There's no room for you to even have them in your lap anymore. They're overflowing. See, that's a law. You cannot have abundant life without sowing. You cannot have abundance in your finances for the glory of God, for his purposes, not for your own fun to have with money. I don't mean that. For you, for it's God's will for you to live in abundance with finances. So you could be a blessing to others, a blesser and not the lender or not the, what's the word? Borrower. He wants you to be a blesser, not a borrower, right? And so for you can t- you to steward his resources well, for you to give so much to orphans, for you to build an orphanage, for God to get the glory through this, amen? So it's God's will for you to have abundance even in finances, every area of your life, even in finances. But there's truly a law. It doesn't matter how good of a heart you have for God, how good your heart is to give to the poor, give to the needy, give to the work of God. God cannot release those blessings to you, those supernatural resources, until you sow. It's just a law. It's just simply a law. 
And so that's how I, I see, I mean, I'm like, I must sow. Like, I take this seriously. I take this seriously. I'm like, God wants to release a lot to me. Well, I better be sowing. I got to make sure, I got to do my calculations, make sure I'm not robbing God of anything. 10% is, is, belongs to him. We need to give more than that, right? I take it seriously because I know it's a law. It doesn't matter my intentions. Yes, God looks at the heart, but when our eyes have seen, we have to grow up and abide by the laws. Just like, oh, I forgot to follow the speed limit. Oh, but you know my heart. After a while, come on, we got to grow up and follow the law. Take it seriously. This is called revering God. Amen. So I want to give you examples of actual laws in the spiritual realms, not nice words of God that God just has for us there because he wants us to follow them. These are actual laws. And no, so that's a law number one. What you sow, you will reap. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. These are true laws in the spiritual realm. And that's why these doors open up in the spiritual realm, like money comes your way or something, or doors open up, favor upon you. It's the spiritual realm follows God <laughs> and sees what you're doing and works things in your favor when it sees what you've done. Hallelujah. So here's another example of a law. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Proverbs 18.21, this is the Passion Translation. It says, your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. And the talkative person will reap the consequences. So, once again, it doesn't matter how much you fast, how much you read the Bible, how much you pray, how much you love God, this is a law. If you speak death over your life, you are going to reap death over your life. If you speak sickness, lack over your life, you are going to reap that. It doesn't matter how much you love God, how much God loves you, it's a law. Hallelujah. This is another example of a law. And this is, this, is where, um, the, this is where the people who practice witchcraft, knowingly or unknowingly, this is them knowing the spiritual laws, speaking the things they want, speaking curses. They know this law. And there are results when you follow the law. So we need to speak life always. Amen. We need to be careful over our words. I know this is a law. When I had revelation of this, I became so careful over my words. I became quiet. It says the talkative person will reap the, re will reap the, con the bad consequences. Meaning like when you're careless over your words, when you're talking just to talk, when you're gossiping carelessly, when you're speaking like, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm, I'm anxiety. When anything bad that comes your way in life, you're declaring that you have it. No, no, no. We need to understand how it works in the spiritual realm. Our words can kill or give life. I don't want to kill my body. I don't want to accept sickness in my life. I don't want to accept lack in my life. So I'm going to speak only life because this is the law in the spiritual realm. I want God to heal me. So therefore, I have to speak by his stripes. I am healed. Sickness can't stay in my body. I do not have fear. I do not have depression. It cannot stay in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you start taking these laws seriously, that's when everything changes for you. I become, seriously, I become serious now. B before you're like, oh, God knows my heart. Sometimes it's fun to gossip, but he knows my heart. Sometimes it's fun to complain, but he knows my heart. I'm going to go read the Bible and fast and pray, you know. It doesn't work that way. This is revering God. These are his laws. He wants to use me powerfully. He wants to get glory through me. He wants to use me mightily. So in order for that to happen, I must obey his laws. I must take his laws seriously. This is revering God. The Bible talks about David was a man after God's own heart. This is being a, being a woman or man after God's own heart. 
God, I want to please you so much more than anything. God, I want to be in your will more than anything. I want you to use me more than anything. I want you to gl get glory through my life more than anything. So therefore, I know you've directed me. I must follow your laws to be in your will. So I will take them more seriously than anything. Hallelujah. Here's another example. Here's another example of a law. 1 Corinthians 4.15. So Paul is saying to his spiritual son, uh, you, you could call mentor, but this is really, he's speaking of, he was a covering over Paul, over Timothy. Paul was a covering in the spiritual realm, a covering. God speaks that we should be like a tree planted beside the waters. The revelation of that is that we should be planted in a house of God where God leads us to be, where his true power is. Because when we're planted, then we can grow big and strong and bear good fruit. This is a law that when we go here, there, here, there, everywhere and don't remain planted, we cannot bear good fruit at all. This is an example of a law. It's just how it is. Oh, but God, I'm just... I love all of your people. I want to go here and there, and I'm just on fire, and I just, I want to, I want to keep, make sure I'm fire, full of fire of God, so I'm going to go here and there and here and there. Ooh, so much that I'm confused. Instead of being planted like God instructs us so we can actually grow big and strong and mature and bear good fruit. So, once again, that we need this revelation when it speaks about this plant, this tree that's planted. It's speaking, this is actually a law here. I need to be planted. So, uh, Paul is speaking another law here. He's saying, you can have 10,000 other teachers to teach you about Christ. You can have other teachers. You can listen to other teachings. But you only have one spiritual father or mother. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. You only can have one. This is a law. For you to grow big and strong and be protected and access that anointing of protection and growth. And to really be, walk, be able to walk in that anointing like Elisha from Elijah. He was planted and that anointing came upon his life. This is how it works. It's a law. We can't be like, I want anointing here, and anointing here, and anointing here, and anointing. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's a law. It's a law. That's a law. So Paul's instructing him. He's like, this is a law. You can only have one father. You need to know where your father or mother is. You need to know where you're planted. You need to know where you are receiving anointing from. And you need to take that seriously in your heart that you are planted and not be scattered in your heart and in your actions. Amen? So what happens is when in your heart, in your actions, you start to uh, uproot yourself and not stay loyal to where God's planted you, and this can look like different ways, you are breaking laws in the spiritual realm. And so this is what opens up the door to, for example, the angel of light. The angel of light to speak to you. Pride is another thing that can open a door when one, when one doesn't want to stay planted. Many times it's pride. The Bible says that God gives grace to the humble. But God's grace is for everyone. God's grace is for everyone for salvation. Jesus' blood purchased your salvation, and his grace covers all of you for salvation. But when it comes to accessing the abundant life that he provided for you on that cross, when it comes to accessing it, we have to get under where his grace is moving. We have to be humble. We have to follow the spiritual laws to access the abundant health and deliverance. Abundant life. This is why so many Christians are in bondage. Yes, they have the grace of God of salvation, but they're still in bondage because their eyes aren't opened up to these laws and they're not following them. They're breaking them and opening up doors to the devil. 
So let me give you another example of how when you uproot yourself in your mind, in your heart, in your actions, sometimes pride, what, what can happen is, is when you're planted, that's a blessing. It says that apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, they are gifts for you. They're to equip you to receive the anointing that they have and higher. Go glory to glory. Receive a double, uh, a double portion like Elisha did. So to have teachers to equip you, to release to you, to equip you is a blessing, is a gift. But what happens is some people, because of pride, miss that. And they start bring, wanting to compete. And the moment that pride and that like competition gets in their heart and they lose sight that this is your gift for you to be blessed and to walk in anointing and go higher if that's God's will than the person equipping you, um, if they lose sight of that, they're opening up door for the enemy. They're opening up door for the, e for the angel of light to come and speak things. Spirit of religion to come and say, I don't think they're casting out demons the right way. Or, um, that's a woman preaching. It, the, the spirit of religion makes them like a know-it-all. And the spirit of religion makes it so their religious traditions are supreme over the Holy Spirit moving and doing a new thing. There are people who... They, they don't take it ser this law seriously of being planted and humbling yourself, and they get prideful, and they, that opens up the door for this angel of light to come in. When I'm saying angel of light, for those of you that don't know the scripture, the Bible says that the, the devil can come as an angel of light. Here's an example of an angel of light. Come and speak into your ear. <gasps> but women aren't supposed to preach. And it sounds like it, it's, 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 the, it's in the Bible, but it's with the wrong revelation, right? Um, uh, uh, here's another example. Um, uh, I, I, I don't see the uh, uh, church is supposed to be this way, where there's, a, there's an altar call where you say, repeat after me this exact prayer. <gasps> oh, so people aren't getting saved. <gasps> so that's the spirit of religion taking scripture, twisting it, not the true revelation of the Holy Spirit, and making this, this is God speaking to me. They're wrong. This preacher's wrong. This church is wrong. When really, right now, God's had enough of religion. God's had, God's had enough of people remaining in bondage, not knowing the love of God and repeating like robots. I raise my hand. God, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. And, but they're not doing it from their heart. God wants people to really, really meet him, really encounter him, so that on their own accord, Jesus, I give my life to you. We've seen people run around the park like this under a tree. Jesus, I love you so much. I give you everything. I surrender. That's how my surrender happened. I was a Christian my whole life. I repeated the sinner's prayer every Sunday for so many years, probably hundreds of times. But not one time was I really surrendered because I hadn't actually met Jesus yet. And that's what gives you the power to actually surrender. <laughs> and then one day I encountered the power of God for the first time and with my own heart six years ago. Jesus, I surrender. I give you my whole life. You can even take me to a deserted island. I give you my dreams, everything. Have your way, Jesus. I feel so desperate for you to have my life completely. No altar call. Nobody said, everyone raise your hands and repeat after me. No, one, no, it was my own heart. It was real. And it stayed real since that day. Yeah. See, so this is Holy Spirit moving now, you know? Like, this is Holy Spirit moving here in this church, doing a new thing. But people are so used to church being a certain way. We need to have this routine and then this tradition. <sighs> again and again and again. <sighs> You know, and they bring scripture to back it up, but it's with the wrong revelation, no revelation of the Holy Spirit, religious revelation. So this law of going against, of, of, of not humbling yourself, not staying planted, opens up the door for the angel of light to speak and to speak this religious nonsense. And then all of a sudden you're coming and you're saying, oh, I don't think you're doing this right and this right and this right. Ah, 
And at that point, when you come to your mentor or leader and you come speaking like that, oh, I mean, the, the laws have been broken so much in the spiritual realm. You've broken so many laws. You've come with so much pride and not humility. If you have questions, I'm teaching you something so you don't open up the, because the, the, the spirit of light is a really bad thing. The angel of light, the angel of light is a really bad thing. So I'm teaching you this to know for your, your mentor, your leader, if it's me, if it's someone else, come humbly. Come, if you see your mentor or, or, or leader casting out demons and you're not, healing the sick and you're not, come humbly, amen? Don't cause, say you're doing things wrong. Come on, let's be a little more humble, come on. And so come, like, I have a question. I don't quite understand this. I don't understand the scripture. Can you help me understand? It's good to have questions, but come with that heart. Don't allow the angel of light to make you break so many laws and God to oppose you. God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. But what if the, the proud think that they love God and they're praying and fasting and leading Bible studies and reading the, so much of the Bible and praying all the time, but they're proud? God still opposes them? Yes! This is a law! <laughs> we have to take it seriously about being humble. <laughs> or we're getting into trouble, breaking lots of laws. And we don't want to be opposed by God. Amen? Hallelujah. You see how we need to take these laws seriously? It's like, don't get into dangerous waters. <laughs> When you're saying, God's speaking, I think God's speaking to me this. And, you know, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Understand these laws. Hallelujah. Okay, now, 2 Kings 4, verse 1. This speaks of a wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she says, except a small jar of olive oil, Elisha said. Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. So this is a familiar story that many of you may know of the widow who uh, needed oil. Needed needed oil to pay the debts um so th there was a debt that she owed because of her husband because her husband owed money it now fell on the family and elisha had the power of god the anointing but he wasn't just like poof i pray i declare that your creditors will lose their memory <laughs> right no he, you know what he understood laws physical and spiritual and he says I know what you need to be free you have to pay this debt so I'm going to speak this anointing to come on your life doors to open up for provision so you can keep giving and giving and giving what 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 what, has, what you owe until your whole family's free so I'm going to go a little bit deeper right now with you, so stay with me here. This is very much meat in the spiritual realm. This is meat, deep meat, okay? So now that you understand how there's laws in the spiritual realm, now can you understand why deliverance sometimes is more complex? Sometimes it's as simple as commanding the demon to go when there's anointing present. Sometimes it's simple as renouncing. But sometimes people, sometimes people need more and more deliverance. Sometimes there's keys that need to be accessed to unlock their deliverance. 
So when a person has broken laws and gone deep into breaking those laws, deep into witchcraft, or deep into doing things like owing people money, opening up doors even for people to cast curses on one because you've done so much wrong to somebody, if the person practices witchcraft, that's when things become more complex. There's more laws that have been broken when one is involved more with witchcraft and they've broken more and more laws. Or maybe part of your family, past generations have done that, broken many laws. The same way that there was this law broken where they needed to, they had money owed that they needed to pay, laws can be broken in the spiritual realm like this where debt needs to be paid, where so much has been given to the enemy, so much witchcraft has been done, so much to the enemy has been given, that in the spiritual realm, to be free of the curses that came with breaking these laws, one needs to give more, give more to God, surrender more to God, so more to God. And there are even cases of this, like in the spiritual realm. If a person uh, uh, owes someone tons of money, like did them wrong, and that person does witchcraft, a door has been open where they're like given authority to cast a curse on them. Because of the laws in the spiritual realm, a door has been opened for that to happen. And now what happens is this can be even on the family, where the family owes this person something. They need to give back money. If you've done wrong to someone, make it right. Make it right so you can be released. And if this is not possible, so to God. And even if, so to God, so to God. I have a different teaching about sowing to receive freedom and healing. And I won't go into depth about it today, but make sure you check it out. You can search it on my YouTube, but this is one of the keys to unlock some people's deliverance. It's not everyone's, but sometimes because of the case, just like Jesus, when he healed a person of leprosy, he says, go give an offering to the priest. He wasn't just saying that to say that. He could see there was a key that was unlocking that person's deliverance. They needed to sow. Because there is power in the spiritual realm with sacrifice. There always has been and there always will be. Sacrifice. It unlocks things. David made a sacrifice to God and people were even trying to give him calves for free to make the sacrifice. He says, no, to make a true sacrifice, I know how things work in the spiritual realm, it has to be a true sacrifice from me. It can't be free calves sacrificing. So he makes a sacrifice. And when he makes the sacrifice, the Bible says, then God came and says, I end the plague now. You see that? You see how there, there's that principle there? That this is just one example of many in the Bible of when sometimes a sacrifice is required for a freedom, healing to occur, for the, the way the law has been broken for you to be free. So it's like, it's like going into jail. If you go into jail, God is, is not, we need to not look at God being like, why, why did you even let me get into jail spiritually? No, God gives you grace. God gives you everything you need to get out of there and to get out of there early. He gives you the provision to pay for the debts in the spiritual realm. But you have to be humble and open to receiving that from God, receiving the keys. Amen? Don't complain like, God, just free me. God, just free me. That we're all different cases. We're all different cases. Some people, there's been witchcraft done on them. Some there has not. We're all different cases. We all need different levels of deliverance. We all have different keys that need to be unlocked. But we need to be so humble to allow God to reveal them to us and to just do, this is my way to be free. This is my way to be free. We're not to question God. God is good. God is good. God, de the devil said to God, I want to test Job here. I think he only loves you because you bless him. So I want to take all his blessings away and see if he still loves you. 
God was so good when he said, yes, try it. And he took all of his wealth. His family members died. His children died. He took his health. It was taken. He had sickness. But God was so good. But it's hard for us to understand that in the moment. Why do I have to sow so much to be free, God? God is still good. Let's not try to make sense in our, in our minds. We know that there's laws that were broken. We know the spiritual realm is complex. We know there are many Christians who are not free. So let's be humble to just be open to God's ways so we can be free and we can be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can stand to your feet now.